Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on White Coats and Corgis. Today I'm going to be showing you a clip from the Pre-Med Experience which is a live virtual event that I put together for pre-meds to learn all about the admissions process, the MCAT, how to get their extracurriculars, and all things like that. I was so so lucky to get three amazing medical school deans to volunteer to participate in the event. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, hey everyone, and thanks so much for joining. Uh, my name's Dan, and I am a second year internal medicine resident, and I'll be the moderator for this panel. Um, we're joined by three incredible um, deans and admissions experts here, and um, I wanna give everyone the chance to ask questions in that Q&A, um, and I'll be looking through that. Um, but first, I was hoping that the deans could introduce themselves. We can go one by one and just quickly sort of say where you're from and, and what your role is. So if we can start with Dr. Osborne. Um, hello, I'm Megan Boysen Osborne. I am the Associate Dean for Students. So I oversee admissions, student affairs, and diversity, equity, and inclusion at University of California, Irvine. Awesome. Dr. Liotta? Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. And uh, I'm Rob Liotta, and I'm the Associate Dean for Admissions and Recruitment at the Uniform Services University, uh, the Health Sciences. And we're actually on the Walter Reed uh, Bethesda Medical Campus, National Naval Medical Center, Bethesda. So, um, and I'm great to be here with you today. And Dr. Amiri. Hi, everyone. I'm Layla Amiri. I'm the Associate Dean for Admissions at the Robert Larner College of Medicine at the University of Vermont. Yeah, awesome. Um, and Dr. Osborne, um, while we have you here as well, quick question. Um, and it's something that I actually heard about a lot when I was applying to medical school, too, is the fact that some students may do the first few years of college at a community college and then transfer to another institution, or they may take certain classes at different colleges or during the summer. What are your thoughts about that and how do you view it when you're evaluating a candidate? Yeah, great. Yeah, go to community college, save some money the first two years of your undergrad because <laughs> there's a lot of money that you're going to have to spend over the next few years and not a lot of money that you're going to make when you're a resident. So I would absolutely recommend going to community college. I think what I'm looking for is just to make sure that you had some rigorous um, science courses at a four-year university and you were successful in those. Someone asked in the chat, can they do a makeshift post back rather than um, a post back that's through a program? And I think absolutely. I think what we're looking for though is those rigorous courses in a four-year university, especially if that four-year university is known to the medical school that you're applying to. For example, if someone were to uh, take two years of community college and then transfer to a four-year university, have a great GPA in that junior and senior year in rigorous science courses, then that's looked no differently than if someone spent all four years at that four-year university. And as an adjacent answer, if someone wants to improve their GPA because maybe they didn't have, they weren't successful in undergrad, I would probably, however, not recommend it in order to improve the overall GPA. I mean, you might consider taking community college classes, but what I really want to see is I want to see that you're able to handle those four-year university science courses. And so I am going to want to see some courses from, for example, here in California, UCLA extension or UCI or something like that. That's really going to show me that you can handle the rigors of medical school. Um, after maybe you didn't have as quite as successful undergrad GP as you wanted to. 